Hey, what's going on? Back again here. Um, wanted to show you a video on how to create your own SIN stocks or VICE ETF uh, or even portfolio if you want. Um, you know, why am I showing you that or showing you how to do this? Um, right now, markets are at sort of all-time highs um, at or close to all-time highs and sin stocks have proven to be uh, recessionary proof uh, in a way uh, depending on the stock uh, obviously with recessions consumer spending slows people don't buy as many cars they have they purchase less in terms of retail goods perhaps they move from luxury items down to cheaper goods um, but even in extreme recessionary conditions sin stocks which include alcohol tobacco gambling marijuana um, other related vices I won't go into all the the various subsectors but uh, even in extreme recessionary conditions people will um, will consume or uh, consume those products or services both in good times or bad um, and so there's a number of different stocks that are out there in terms of public companies uh, that uh, that you can build your own ETF or portfolio through. There is a ETF already out there called the Vice ETF. So why wouldn't you just invest in the Vice ETF? Um, well, su surprise, you know it's it's 2019 now, um, and there's a number of different free completely commission-free uh, platforms out there that you can use. One that I, I truly like to use is M1 Finance. Uh, they have a finance pie that you create based off of various stocks. And it almost acts like an ETF because you can do different weightings, uh, contribute and allocate money uh, to the various holdings, build and add different investments. And that's all completely free, commission-free, $0. Um, here, this ETF costs 75 basis points, uh, 143 basis points are, are waived or reimbursed, uh, but overall a gross expense ratio of 2.2%. Um, you know, when, when people build ETFs, they, there's really not much going on, on you know, on a day-to-day. -day. It's not actively managed by the manager. Um, they'll allocate uh, the holdings, you know, based on a market cap weighting. And, you know, as stocks go up and down over quarters or months or even weeks, they'll change the allocations over time. Um, and you can do the exact same thing with M1 Finance. So, and that's completely free. Maybe you don't want to be as, you don't want to change as much, but, um, um, you know, you can you can change every quarter or however you like. Uh, and that's all completely free. So there, there's nothing eroding your returns. Uh, ETFs are a little bit of a black box. You just don't really get to see the inner workings of them. And so um, why not build your own? Uh, it's nowadays it's it's too easy to be able to just just build something uh, from scratch. And so I'll show you exactly how to do that and how to create your own sin stocks portfolio and ETF. So the Vice ETF actually gives you their daily holdings data. So let's use that to our advantage. So now I, I've downloaded their Excel sheet uh, that uh, has all their holdings, uh, the price, the, the market cap. This portfolio weighting is, is you know, directly off of market cap. We can, we can check that even here. See, it's based off of market cap, so we can we can we can just create this on our own. And so, um, and there's perhaps there's companies in here that you just you don't want allocation to, uh, whether that's valuation wise or you like particular products better. So, why not just create your own sort of mini ETF? There's not that many stocks in here. There's you know 36. Um, you could whittle this down to you know, 15 core holdings to build into 
M1 Finance. One tool that I use and I highly suggest everyone considers using is Finbox. Um, here's the dashboard of Finbox. It costs one dollar to, to try it out for one month in terms of premium. Um, after that, it's only thirty-nine dollars per month. Uh, that is extremely cheap relative to other products that provide similar services. Uh, you basically have access to everything uh, Wall Street investors would. Um, same valuation sort of tools, plugins in terms of Excel. Um, it really is a, a tool that has opened sort of Pandora's box for me um, in terms of investing ideas, uh, ways to think about stocks, ways to find new opportunities, uh, create different screeners, uh, watch lists, etc. And so I highly suggest you check it out. They do have a, a plug-in in Excel that uh, is extremely, extremely powerful. Um, so I will, I will use that to uh, come up with a, a basis for this Synstox ETF. So here I've downloaded their various metrics that they have in Excel. Um, I mean, you can just see the power of the tool itself and how many options you have and various ways you you can look at different stocks uh, for purposes of this exercise I will only focus in on uh, a handful of these um, so I, I, I'll walk you through it I'll whittle down our sort of 36 stock ETF into some that are uh, attractively valued and would you know fit the baseline of um, something we you know I personally would want to invest in so here I have the the plugin already installed let's start with just dividend yield I like stocks that do actually pay a dividend um, so that's just dividend yield it's a pretty slick plugin So there you go. It's that easy. Now you already have. So let's just do dividend yield. Okay. Next up, let's take a look at EV to EBITDA less CapEx on an LTM basis. I like this um, simply due to the fact that it's a good barometer of an enterprise's uh, value but it takes out CapEx and cap, capital expenditures. You know, I don't anticipate these have, being very CapEx heavy. Perhaps there's certain instances where they are, maybe depends on the industry, um, but if they are consumer products, they're not gonna have the same sort of retrofitting that uh, a casino might have. Um, this is where it's helpful to have two screens without a doubt. Um, so EV2. EBITDA, CapEx, LTM. So 21.6 times. Fair value. So Finbox actually provides um, their estimation of a stock's value. So why not? Why don't we just bring that in and see what they come up with? Free cash flow yield. I think this is a great. A great metric basically tells you what free cash flow is going to equity holders. Um, you know, the higher the better. I like seeing that spread of free cash flow yield um, much higher than you know what we see for Darden at least here. Um, but free cash flow, I mean, that's that's basically the 
the main driver of a, any sort of valuation of a, a business on a discounted cash flow basis. And so um, if you're generating cash, there's a, a significant cash, there's uh, significant options for you to do uh, things with your business, whether that's reinvest or even pay more dividends. And so uh, cash flow is king. Um, so why not see at least a, you know, um, a, a barometer for each dollar of, of equity that's invested. So, uh, and then peg ratio, as you know, is price to earnings relative to the growth of the company. No one likes to overpay for growth. presume a lot of these stocks um, will have, you know, especially the consumer products will have, you know, very high uh, peg ratios. Uh, what's this one? I already forgot. Uh, fair value. Free cash flow. Yield. Okay, and then let's bring all these down. Okay, looks like Louis Vuitton is not supported. The plug-in either is New Age. Pike says this must be, yeah. Something that's not supported too. Let's just get rid of these ones. You know, perhaps they're great investment opportunities. I know, I know um, Louis Vuitton, and you know, uh, it's obviously an outstanding brand. Um, uh, and then obviously this ETF does hold some cash, um, as well as just uh, well, there's just probably a sweep here where they just sweep it into Treasury. Um, but they do hold on dry powder. But for us, we're not uh, oriented on dry powder. We don't really need that in our buildup. So here now, let's think about things from just a valuation standpoint. I personally, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not. I, I don't want to invest in anything that has negative growth. Um, or even uh, is a very, very high peg ratio. So let's, um, anything greater than one and a half. Oh, I'm sorry, anything less than one and a half. eight stocks let's maybe bump that up to two okay so now we're at 15 stocks negative free cash flow yield I don't think you know that's something we do not like whatsoever looks like this is like significantly a very very low free cash flow yield uh, so they this to me looks like a company that had significant capex but they're growing um, so I, I don't mind keeping them in there they pay a small dividend so that's good as well um, Catalent. I actually don't know Catalent. Um, high valuation, high peg. For me, I don't know you, so let's just get rid of them. Molson Coors, high free cash flow yield, low EV, EBITDA, less CapEx. Um, so this looks, even though the peg ratio, something's wonky there, perhaps they had a you know, bad growth historically, and maybe that's turning around going forward. 
the valuation looks attractive enough for us to continue including this into um, into the holdings here. Fair value at least is higher too uh, in the, the price here on uh, Finbox's estimation. Okay, so 13 different stocks. Okay, yeah, so maybe you're not getting the full uh, diversification that you would on the underlying ETF, um, but at the same time, you're getting rid of potentially a number of different underperformers um, that could be in, in that underlying ETF. And here you can whittle down to exact stocks that, uh, you know, that are, you know, have a higher likelihood of succeeding. You can go into a lot of different analyses and, you know, in terms of um, valuation as well as credit metrics, capital structure, et cetera. I think, uh, so this is just an example. Uh, hopefully I'll f follow up with more in-depth analyses uh, to help you build your, your portfolio, but uh, this should be at least a good basis uh, to start off of. So in terms of creating your own ETF though, um, now we need to start building this. Just like an ETF would, you want to create your holdings based off of market cap weighting. So that's up to 100%. Our largest holding will be Darden. I don't know how I feel about that in terms of valuation, um, but. Uh, you know, it is worth digging into further. Uh, if you do, you know, if you think, look into Dart and see if it's a, a stock that, uh, you know, makes sense um, to include. I mean, heavy weighting towards towards them at basically fair value is, um, you know, something to just sort of think about. Uh, could be a underperformer. There's a few stocks in here that I like a bit more. Um, now is the part where we want to create this into our M1 finance, um, finance pie. Okay, so now we're in M1 finance. You can see the, the dashboard here on to create a, a pie. We have our holdings within our Synstox ETF or VICE ETF. So let's start inputting these in here. All you have to do is just simply type in the ticker, add it to your basket. There's some that is given M1 Finance. Some of them, you know, if there are international stocks that are in here, some might not be available on M1 Finance. So just go in one by one, Altria, AbV, RCI. CIA, Universal Corp, Craft Brew Alliance. So I presume CIA is not on there. So 
So I input most of them here now. Um, our allocation would change if CIA is not in there. So then from there you'd add, click add on the the bottom here. That would then take you to a screen where you could input your allocations. I won't bore you with all of the step-by-step uh, -step detail as you could do it yourself here as you go, but hopefully you found this video helpful on how to screen one screen for SIN stocks to create your own portfolio in M1 Finance to track SIN stocks, as well as use Finbox to determine uh, your most important valuation metrics uh, to screen and whittle down uh, stocks that are, are more important uh, in terms of your uh, valuation investing goals, as well as uh, um, uh, your financial pr planning purposes. So please feel free to let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below. I'd love to uh, hear from you and answer any questions uh, relating to anything M1 Finance, Finbox, or even investing. Thanks.